A, a very special cast here for the very first edition of Open Court Owners. Our collective net worth has shot up dramatically here, and we're glad to have all of you with us. Let's introduce to everyone. First, from the Dallas Mavericks, it's Mark Cuban. Hey. From the LA Clippers, it's Steve Ballmer. Jeannie Buss, second generation of ownership from the LA Lakers. Joe Lacob from the champion Golden State Warriors. Tony Ressler of the Atlanta Hawks and Dan Gilbert of the 2016 champion Cleveland Cavaliers. All right, Joe, champions first. How do you view your role as an NBA owner? In other words, what is your job? That's an interesting question. <laughs> I don't know. I view my own, my job from my standpoint is to win again. <laughs> I mean, that's what we work on. I haven't even had a chance to enjoy it, to be honest. Uh, people think, oh, we're just partying and all that, but the truth is, uh, we went right from that to the parade, the draft, free agency. Uh, you know, I just am always focused on the job, and the job is to continue to get our organization better. Tony, what do you think? What, what is your job? Well, my job is a little different than Joe's job, I think, because uh, it is, in fact, to win, but maybe not uh, at, uh, with as an immediate an approach. Uh, it's been 49 years in Atlanta since they've won a championship. Right. All right, and we haven't had, I should say, in Atlanta, we haven't won a championship. St. Louis. Right. The St. Louis Hawks won a championship. So we've had 49 years in Atlanta without a championship. So I have a job, which is to create a championship culture. Um, it's not done overnight. Uh, it's not done uh, in a period of weeks or months. But uh, with the right focus, it will be done. And that's what I'm there for. Uh, it's going to uh, be a focus that I, I did not appreciate the amount of time and effort that is obviously required and, and you, you get to see that when you see great franchises that have built championship cultures uh, we have a little bit of work to do but uh, we have a path that we know what to do and uh, we plan to go after it well Jeannie you obviously have been a part of championship culture with the LA Lakers how do you as an owner affect change toward that goal what I think the role of an owner is um, to put together all the pieces. We're the producers. We're, we, we put everything together so that the team can be the best that they can be, that they can um, meet their expectations of who they are as players and maybe even exceed them and, and um, come together as a team. And winning a championship is really difficult. It's really hard. And every year that's your goal. But it's, um, you know, great competitive ownership groups all doing the right things. Uh, we just try to, to, you know, put together the pieces and hope for the best. Dan, what is the job description of an NBA owner? Yes, you know, it's funny you asked that question because I was just talking to Joe right before we went on the air here. In, in, in every other business in the world almost, the number one complaint of the, of the person who either owns a business or is in charge usually is that they're too much of a micromanager, they, they're too much involved, they need to let, let things go. In the NBA or sports, I guess, in general, if you're an owner, the second you cross the line into the arena, you're meddling, and you need to stay away. <laughs> uh, you know, so I guess it depends on who you ask, right? And I, you know, but I would say I agree with, with the owners here. I think that, number one, setting a culture, you know, which in most businesses today is, is probably you know, the number one thing. I think years ago, people didn't talk too much about it, but cultures culture's everything and I think you know determining obviously the financing and backing backing the, the business with what the capital it needs like any other business and and unfortunately or fortunately depending on if you like it or not there'll be certain decisions that hard decisions that have to be made and hopefully you, you can do the work that you make more right ones and wrong ones. Steve it's interesting you don't you don't play you don't coach you don't scout you don't individually sell sponsorships any of that stuff so what is your job? Uh, I'll pick up on where Dan left off. There are big decisions that are only the owners to make. Big financial decisions, whether it has to do with roster or whether it has to do with building a new arena or remodeling or whatever you're going to do. Those decisions, they're non-delegable. They're, they're non-delegable. You go to your, team, your, your leaders, but they know it's your money, so they're going to need to ask you. The owner's, the owner's the only guy you can count on being around in five years. If you just look at the longevity of people enrolled, the owner's the person who's going to be around. So who has to make the commitment to the organization about what it wants to be and why you should be there? It's on the owner because the players can turn over, the coach could turn over, 
the front office staff can turn over. Now, it's nice if you can do it you know, 15, 20 years in a row. That's the way it's nice to run any business. It's just probably not as realistic, particularly with the players, it's not as realistic. When we bought our team seven years ago, the number one thing was to set a vision and, and a culture, as you point out. But the most important thing, and it's like any other business, really, is to hire the right people to do the job. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do the, none of us do all the work. We don't do the job, but we have to hire the right people. That is our most important thing. Now, this issue of meddling, which has come up <laughs> a couple times now. By the way, you don't hear, is there any other business that word, maybe the Joker on Batman, he meddled. <laughs> you don't really, you no, know, when have you ever heard that the word? The Scooby-Doo. Yeah, often maybe he's meddling. Meddling kids. It's a yeah. word that only goes with ownership of sports. <laughs> Dan and I were talking no. about it. The truth is, the best owners, I think we believe, are those that are very involved. They do not micromanage. Right. That's the key, right? We don't micromanage, but we're very, very involved and know all the details. What's the time commitment in terms of what you do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, particularly for someone who has other business interests? I think it ebbs and flows, and I think, again, what Joe was saying, I think whether or not you're a senior level meddler or you're just a mid-level <laughs> meddler, it depends on how much you want to meddle, you know. But, but, you know, generally I agree with what you're saying. I think the successful teams you, over the years, um, you know, and I, I, I think, you know, if you look at the Lakers, even I think, you know, your father was, was he was involved with the team. And I think, you know, the teams that have, have won a lot of championships, usually there's, there's involvement. I, I like the way you were saying there's involvement, but not, you know, detail on every single little thing involved. It's hard for, if you're paying people for the value of their judgment, you gotta, you gotta let them judge. We'll get uh, much deeper into the decision making and uh, or meddling, as the case may be, <laughs> of an NBA owner as we continue from Las Vegas. I'm glad that you're in the league, Me too. but we did have to change rules. We had to say, as an owner, you cannot sign yourself to play on your team. Because it was a concern. Because yeah. so we had to add that <laughs> rule, the Mark Cuban rule, not, so you couldn't no. sit on the bench <laughs> with your team wearing a, a uniform. <laughs> <laughs>